I'd like to walk you through my project on housing prices in King County area. It's a county in Washington and it contains popular cities such as Seattle. So before we get started I'd like to walk you through some of the libraries I'll be using today in my project. Uh, the primary library that or yes the library that I'll be using is ggplot2 and the sub package of that which is ggmap. I'll also be using the dplyr package so uh, ggmap is a package built on top of the ggplot uh, package that allows you to do statistical analysis in combination with geographical information. So since my data set contains longitude and latitude coordinates, I really wanted to visualize where some of the most expensive houses are located visually. The dplyr package is, makes it easy to work with tabular data such as mine. I really like using the glimpse feature as well compared to the built-in structure function in R to see a real quick overview of my data. So I'm just going to walk you through the beginning part of my script. So I'm reading in the house.data, that's the variable I created, to contain my CSV file as you can see here. And I made sure to include the header just so I can use the variable names later on in my analysis. And for the sake of performance, I wanted to kind of cut down on the amount of data that I was analyzing because I ran it a few times and it was crashing my computer and it was really slowing down my analysis. So I decided to only take the first 5,000 rows of this data just for sake of performance and I stored that as a variable known as house.data. Uh, once all this preemptive stuff was done, I attached the uh, data file to my R environment. That way I can use the variable names later on in my analysis. So I, I'd like to start by section one is data exploration. So we're just going to go through kind of a brief overview of my data set that I'm working with. Uh, as you can see here, I'm using the dplyr glimpse function that I mentioned previously. And let me just bring that up, the console up, to show you what I'm talking about. So as you can see here, this is just a quick glimpse of my, uh, all of my data. So you can see I'm working with 20 variables and 5,000 observations. And some of these are integers, meaning they can have their whole numbers, and then some are DBLs. Uh, for my latitude and longitude, and they can hold decimals, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, but for the most part, I'm dealing with mostly integer data. And then in my R script, right after I do the glimpse, I do a quick summary of my house data just to get kind of, you know, quick overview of everything. For something like price, I'm dealing with prices as low as $75,000 for a house and a maximum of over $7 million. So this uh, data set really, really uh, encompasses all of the different house prices you might see in a market. You know, you have your lower end, middle class, and then obviously your extremely expensive mansions that the wealthy are living in. Okay. So after I do the summary, I make my prices in terms of hundred thousands, just to uh, kind of make it easier to understand what I'm analyzing. So I simply divide my house data column um, over a hundred thousand, and then that breaks it down into terms of hundreds of thousands. So and then I'm just running some price distributions, bedroom distributions, condition, kind of just go through them real quick. So the distribution of price is pretty right skewed, which is to be expected. Um, distribution of bedrooms ranges, you know, from all the way from one bedroom to mainly six. There's a couple of outliers here at uh, seven and eight, but I'm assuming they're, they're more often found in the mansions that I was discussing in the uh, summary outlook. Uh, the condition, you know, this is pretty normal. Uh, there's over 21,000 houses being analyzed, so you're sure to find some that are kind of on the lower end of the condition, and then some of the newer ones recently built within the past uh, 25 years or so. Okay. Um, so now I really want to take a look at uh, the square footage in terms of uh, price by square footage. So as you can see here, um, for the most part, the square footage of this, of almost every house in here, kind of falls in this left, lower left quadrant uh, between, you know, uh, probably about 70 grand to 200 grand and ranges up to a thousand square feet. But as like any data set, you know, there's a bunch of outliers here uh, in the 4,000 square foot range. Again, it's probably uh, co corresponding to some of the mansions I mentioned earlier. So now we'll get into the multiple linear regression. This was probably this was the big chunk of my project. I really wanted to accurately, you know, kind of see where prices were being affected by in terms of my variables. So let me scroll down to that output for you. 
So right here, I seem to have a lot of significant values, as you can see here. The three asterisks mark significance. Um, any asterisks really mark significance. Uh, something that was really surprising me was this waterfront uh, variable. That's the biggest coefficient. So every one unit increase in this waterfront variable adds about $778,000 to the uh, property's price, which is something to uh, look for later on in my analysis when I'm going to map these on ggmap. I think it's going to be uh, interesting to see you know, exactly where these houses are plotted in terms of the uh, geographic regions. Um, then I do a summary model. So let me go down. So it's pretty uh, good R, adjusted R squared, you know, not great. I don't know if I would run with this if I were making actual decisions based off this, but for the sake of this project, uh, around 70% of accountability in the variance of my data, that's, that's uh, enough for me to move forward. Um, if I were to rerun this, I might want to drop some insignificant variables that I think don't really affect the price the way I would want. So something like zip code, latitude, longitude, uh, maybe ID, the floors, and square foot of the loft. I really don't think they affected the, the model too much, so I might look to drop them in the future. These are just, I just rounded the summary up here, as you can see, kind of make it easier for the eye to read instead of uh, multiplying out the exponential things. So as you can see, this waterfront variable I mentioned, you know, keep keep an eye on that. And as well as number of bathrooms is a great indicator of price as well, which is pretty interesting. Um, so I just created a scot uh, scatter plot of you know price by year. You can see that. Uh, it's pretty pretty uh, stable, you know, right here. Great Depression, kind of uh, like nineteen late nineteen thirties, um, kind of took a hit. But for the most part, it's been pretty stable. Uh, a little, little spike in the 90s, and it looks like there's a, another spike coming in the early two or the late 20s, 2000s. Um, then I ran into Nova, kind of just grouping everything. So for Nova, I really wanted to look at, you know, changes by quarter of century. So in terms of, you know, did house prices really spike in a 20 in 25 year increments? So I did a Nova. Um, I'll just get to that. So as you can see here is the ANOVA. Uh, for the most part, it's been pretty stable actually. So 2000 to present is looking upwards. You know, the prices are definitely a little bit higher, but you know, for the most part, it has been pretty stable. Uh, I ran Tukey's test as well, just to kind of, there's my four loop breaking down the centuries. Um, so Tukey's test is right here. Got about two insignificant groupings, but for the most part, everything else is pretty significant. So as you can see, you know, 2000 to current and 1900 to 1925, it's a insignificant grouping, and 1975 to 2000 and 1925 to 1950 is another insignificant grouping. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, now we're gonna get into GG maps. This is probably my favorite part of the project because it really let me paint a picture visually. Uh, you know, I've got to plot my geometric points using my latitude and longitude coordinates. So let me just walk through this. I actually ran all these scripts prior to uh, recording just for time, because this took a little bit of time to run. So as you can see, GG maps. Here's my output. Let me walk, work, walk you through the R script. So I created a variable, most expensive houses. So I just said anything over 650 grand was. Uh, determined to be expensive in my data set. I did this by just, you know, running a quick distribution of the pricing and I picked a cutoff point and this seemed to be the most most reliable cutoff point. So anything more than 650 grand I deemed most expensive. Um, okay, so now we select the columns we need. So most expensive houses, we're selecting those columns. Now, now we're getting into one of the functions of ggmap. So I'm plotting the map. I'm using the get map function of King County, Washington which is a county in Seattle, or that contains Seattle. Uh, the zoom level is set to 10, and that's just your, you know, your standard city outlook. So a lot of you may know, like the Google Maps, you're zooming in and out. This is just a, kind of the default one. The map type is hybrid. I really wanted hybrid set to this because you get the street and city names, and it's on top of a satellite image, which is really helpful, I think, in visualizing this. And then obviously for the color, I chose black and white. 
just so my green dots kind of contrasted what I was showing. Um, now we're getting into the ggmap function. So I'm going to store this map as M. And then I'm using ggmap. So I'm using this M layer plus this plus sign right here adds geometric points to my, uh, to my initial map. So I'm using the data I created earlier, the most expensive houses. That's not going to give me anything over 650 grand. I'm using the lo longitude coordinates as my x, the y is latitude, and the color is green. Size of 2, just a kind of a small dot, and alpha of 0.2 because I really want it to be a transparent overlay, which is why I chose that. And as you can see, the waterfront was something to look at in the, my multiple linear regression, and it kind of holds true to now. You can see the highly con concentrated areas of green along the water, um, especially on the, the east coast of the Seattle city, and even on the outskirts a little bit. Uh, that's my project. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.